Okay. And we'll start with a classic New York year. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Iron Perspective Radio uh, as we continue to transition into the new virtual world. Uh, my name is Jovel H. Whitfield. I'm your co-host and I'm with my co-host. And my name is Nasi Alam. <laughs> And we are the co-founders of I Am Perspective, and we're also um, now doing I Am Perspective radio as well. And tonight's episode is, it's actually our 15th episode, so this is episode 15. And um, we're going to be calling this one The Unsung Heroes. And really, we invited a few people on tonight. Some of, some of us are actually out there doing things and making things happen. And so, you know, they were not able to join us um, at this current time, but we know that there's a lot of us that are out here doing things so we can support both our essential workers and our underprivileged communities. And so as Jarrell and I were thinking about some of the people that we know that have been kind of out there putting themselves on the line, we did think of you two as part of that um, group. And so, and just for a quick backdrop of what yeah. I'm is and what we've done, we were we've been doing um, community work in New York and beyond for the past few years, bringing people together to have conversations, to share perspectives, to learn new perspectives, and um, just like most people in the country, once this hit, once this pandemic hit, like the very fabric of what we did had to be rearranged, you know, because we were in the process of consistently bringing people together, bringing people out their homes, bringing people out of their uh, seclusions. And now that reversed for us. So we, we've been talking in these past few weeks, as most of us are home now, we've been talking with essential workers. We've been talking with people on the front lines. We've been talking with, uh, Everyone who's dealing with this, everyone, we're all sitting in a different seat right now. I'm, we're all kind of sitting in the same space in a different seat. And what the conversation we wanted to have today, uh, we've been talking a lot about people in the medical field and people who are out there and salute to everyone who's putting their work out there. But we personally know people who are actually doing things and, and nobody's even knowing about it. And I think Nassi and I talk about that a lot when it comes to philanthropy. <laughs> And what that actually takes and so we do definitely have some questions for you uh you all today it's we we, uh, we have more people so we don't really need to go through that many ground rules this is going to be more of a, a personal just picking your brain as to what has your heart having you do this work now and, and where it came from and things like that so once again thank you very much for joining us and then we're going to jump right in there with some questions if that's all right Yes. Um, so really the first question, I mean, question is really, you know, please introduce yourselves, um, who you are, um, why, what have you been doing to serve our essential and underprivileged communities? Um, and is, yeah, just really, you can I have more questions. I'm wondering if I should put these together or if they should like. Let's, let's, let's get them introed right there. Yes, let's just do the intro for now. And what you are currently doing um, to help our communities and our system. So, do you care who goes first? No, you can start. Okay. <laughs> well, since I opened my mouth. Hi, everybody. So I'm Kim K. Johnson and I live in Orlando, Florida. So hi to all of you. And I'm really, really humbled to be invited on to I Am Perspective. I really, really have a lot of love for both Jarrell and Nussie. So this is exciting for me. Okay. Uh, uh, what am I doing right now? I'm doing two different things. One, I'm sewing some masks for um, a union sister in Iowa who is fulfilling mask needs for hospitals and stuff. So it's like a little side thing I'm doing. But my big project is called Food to Trunk. And I've been raising money so that I can buy food from local farmer that I support. And then I'm distributing it to out of work 
mostly stagehands and people in the convention and hospitality industry because here in Orlando, it died by the end of February and it will be one of the last industries to come back up and running. And um, probably three quarters of Orlando's workers support that industry. Right, right. That's major. That's major. We were talking about that from afar. And we're going to ask some questions kind of just, you know, relative to where you're at. Uh, yeah. seems, we, we got more familiar, you know, with, with uh, Orlando in the last year and understanding how crucial that is for the economy down there. So, mm -hmm. that, that's cool. yeah. Marie? Okay. So, um, my name is Marie uh, Mazon, and I'm coming to you from Harlem, Harlem, Central Harlem, New York. I'm a licensed social worker uh, and on the counseling faculty at um, the City College of New York, one of the CUNY schools. And um, I have an amazing block association. And the idea was sparked to bring the block together to do a mm -hmm. pay forward to the first responders in our community and um, really was inspired by one of my uh, momentum um, family, my leadership family. Um, we were doing something for one of our members. And I said, you know what? Um, let's see what I can do in my community. And so um, set to raise, uh, set about raising funds to provide meals to the first responder in the Harlem community, in central Harlem. Nice. So actually, um, thank you for kind of giving us a background of, you know, a little bit of what you have been doing. I know we can get a little bit deeper into exactly how that has shown up. Um, you know, actually, let's get, you know, what has it, what does that look like? You said you have an amazing block association, Marine. Mm -hmm. um, what were you able to create? because of your commitment to this um, and what called you to, you know, what really, really called you to do so. And is this at all related to your pre-quarantine life? I know that's a, a lot all in one, but yeah. I know once we start answering the questions, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so. Sure. I, um, one of, one of my purpose, um, in this lifetime, I believe, is to be of service. And my life speaks of service. I'm, my profession is one of being in service as a social worker. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I'm a return Peace Corps volunteer. So I, I've been able to serve overseas. Um, I've always been in, in the act and commitment of service. So it, it was a natural thing for me to see what I can do to support the first responders in the community. Um, I, it, it's, it's interesting how these things start because it, 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 it's a ripple effect. My idea was um, one of the first police precinct that had the first casualty in the city was my precinct, um, the 32nd precinct. We were we lost um, one of the first officers in the city. And my intention was to, um, to connect with them, to give them a little comfort, um, providing a meal. That was it, and a few thank you cards. I reached out to the Black Association, we're a very tight, close group, and said, hey, you know what, let's do something for the first responder. I'm thinking about the police precinct. Mm -hmm. And before I know it, before I knew it, um, it became a um, a bigger endeavor than I anticipated. You know, beautifully, it became a, diff, a larger endeavor where we were able to um, provide meals to um, Harlem Hospital as well as over 2,600 masks. Donate 2,600 masks at a time when the nurses at Harlem Hospital were protesting outside because they did not have enough masks, they did not have enough PPEs, and that was un unacceptable. 
Mm -hmm. um, it's a public hospital that served this very community and we needed to do better. And we were also able to provide um, um, meals to our local EMS. Um, the sound in the community has been of the ambulance. That's been, it's not the ice cream truck, yeah. <laughs> but it's the ambulance that we hear. And um, we raised over $1,600. Um, and we worked with one of the local restaurants who was very generous um, to uh, provide the meals um, because without his generosity, um, our money was able to stretch much yes. further along than I um, would have hoped. But it was basically um, my... Um, my upbringing in terms of tidying of time, talent, and treasure, that's been the foundation of really how I move about the world mm -hmm. and, um, and being able to see the ripple effect. It, it wasn't my intention to provide mass, but it turned out one of the neighbors had a connection. It's amazing how when you just put an idea out, what else come forth? Yeah, and so he had a connection from his office that he was able to get access access to um, twenty six hundred masks, and and at the time when it was very much needed. So yeah. I think I think that's something you know a lot of us, you know, are looking at a whole new way of life and what that could look like, and um, are really evaluating what kind of connections and resources, you know, we have available to offer, right? Um, Kim, I know um, you've definitely been able to use your resources to your advantage. Um, and so really, um, same question, you know, what has called you to do this, your purpose? And so um, I have a stand in life that I think that we should all uh, try to live healthy and self-sufficient, self-sustaining lives. Um, and that we should try to save the planet. So these are places that I sit all the time. I've also been a union stagehand since my youth. I first started in the 70s. Um, I've also played a big management role in Orlando over the years and have um, cared deeply about the growth of an industry and stagehands. I will always be a stagehand first. I'm a stagehand always. And um, that's just, I don't know if you can explain it to people what that means in your heart, but um, regardless of what else I've ever managed to grow in my life, whatever I always did was to try to make their world better. Um, and my husband and son always also belong to the same union. It's IATSE, International Association of Theatrical Stage Employees. So that's one side of it. So I've always been really pro people, pro workers, mm. pro local. I believe in all of that. So here we are in our crisis and in our industry. I mean, seriously, guys, before people were hardly talking about it, theaters, convention centers, and concerts were done. And that's everybody in this town. Within the next few weeks, it was hotels and restaurants, et cetera. It's, it's really bad here in that sense. And then of course we're Florida and we don't have an unemployment system that can work. So that has just tripled everybody's uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. We haven't had New York's challenges. Our challenges are different because we're not fighting the hospitals and the actual illness quite in the same way. We're, ours is more economic here right now for us. Mm -hmm. Anyway, one day, seriously, um, I saw a post from my organic farmer from over on the coast, and he was discussing the fact that all their farmers markets and their restaurants and all their ways of selling their produce were gone. And I mean, seriously, it was in that moment that I saw that it, we have to save the farmers. We cannot leave the other side of this and have our farmers be failed. It, it, we can't do it. And 
we can't let people starve while there's food rotting in the fields. I mean, I'm, I, these are just ideas that are so antithetical to me that I just, yeah. I, I can't even hardly eat, wrap my head around them. So I just started to raise money. I, I kind of had a little chat with my um, entrepreneur friends and we came up with food to trunk. And literally we raise money. My son and I drive for an hour and a half to the farmer. We pick the food up from him as his wife. That's the only humans that are in contact with each other. Mm. We come back to Orlando. We set up two folding tables. We've got people come in their cars. They pop their trunk. We put a bag of food in the trunk. We wave goodbye. We see tears. We see prayers. Mm. And they drive on. So we've tried to do it in as safe a way as possible. And in a way that um, it, no questions asked, so no embarrassing moments. Mm -hmm. And um, we fed 170, which is not anywhere near the kind of numbers Marie has, has affected. But, but on the same way, we're doing a different thing. I'm not, mm -hmm. if I was taking donations and was a food bank, there are thousands of people in this town that are getting food in that fashion mm -hmm. it's different than my model because i'm trying to save the farmer too i'm not asking him to donate his food i'm paying him wholesale but i'm paying him for his food so my money goes so it's it's like a little bit of a weird different model than people have been normally used to in that food bank way mm -hmm. um, and so both ends of the spectrum are being benefiting and it's all organic, kids. So let me tell you, it's a gorgeous bag of produce. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I hear so much um, purpose in. Yeah. Uh, Nussie and I, we we started Iron Perspective really from a need. You know, the question that we just asked you, you know, like, what what actually got you to do it? Because I think a lot of people want to do something often you know even before this people are like oh man there's people homeless there's people sick people want to do things but then i'm very i'm always interested in what actually gets people motivated enough to put it together but you know what really was motivating is the fact that i was able to raise money right you know mm -hmm. without doing anything but posting it yeah. to my facebook group and my sons i think we haven't done a lot mm -hmm. it is spread and we've raised over three thousand dollars and um you know that's i gotta say that's from my network that's from my circle of human you know it might be a few rings out but but we haven't done ads and we haven't reached to strangers like this but you know kim kim um regardless of how many people right i think there's you know we've also had this question before like if we only have 50 people in a room um, is that making enough of a change, right? And um, if, it change, if it helps one, isn't it making exactly. enough of a change? Yeah. Exactly, right? And so even with what you're doing, um, you're serving a population that most people have not had the thought of thinking of, right? And farmers need to live too. So even, you know, we, um, so, you know, I think what Jerome's getting to, right, is that, um, even in doing this episode, we could have said who's helping just the essential workers, but really, I you know we both believe that it's essential workers and the underprivileged because everybody gets to go right because it's not, you know, it's not just our doctors. I mean, and they get to go right, but it's also everybody else. It's not just you don't get to. I don't. I don't like to be in the conversation of who's more important than somebody else, right? And so there's right. going to be people working on all different angles. We have to, you know, the doctors are supporting us by treating us. Some of us get to feed them. Some of us get to feed the underprivileged. Um, yeah, for me, it was just that I, I mean, I feel like I've been staying within what was already yeah, my tribe. And that the tribe is helping the tribe, I guess is kind of where I mean, like the donations yeah. are coming from the same community that we're serving. It's, it's the, so that, that I guess is, feels yeah. a little special, whether it is or isn't, but it feels special. 
Yeah, I, I totally concur with that. Um, I, it was the only criteria that I had about this endeavor that it had to go to people in my community. Um, I had a few neighbors um, that said, oh, what about this organization over here? NYU's doing this and Mount Sinai, why don't we look over there? I said, you know, that's, that's great that, you know, and I believe that folks in those communities are helping them, but I want us to focus on central Harlem. This is where we live. And my block, it, it's, it's just one block on 132nd street in central Harlem from Frederick Douglass Boulevard to Adam Clayton. So that's it. But within that, within that central Harlem, the precinct is three blocks away. The hospital is another um, two blocks away um, going towards the east side. Um, and we hear the ambulance. The ambulance have been on our block. Um, and so I, I uh, really gently steered the conversation to let's focus with what we have uh, with who we have, who are, who is supporting us right now, and not to take away from exactly other communities. Um, I'm a strong believer of um, taking care of home first, right? Strengthening our foundation and saying thank you. Um, and the thank you cards were, um, if not as equally important, but more important that I, I feel than the meals because it's, a, it's something that they can take a look at to say, this community is thinking about us. And I have to say, and I, I'm feeling it in my, my heart space right now, just the overwhelming appreciation that um, the first responders um, felt, it's like, wow, I mean, at the police precinct was like, wow, you know, you're thinking about us. In fact, it took them a minute to receive and accept the meals that we wanted to give them. Um, and, it, and I don't think that anybody has, in the community has ever um, provided meals for them like that. Um, and so uh, while I thought this was something, oh, other people are doing it and we're mm. doing our part, but come to find out that there wasn't anybody else doing it for that for them. Um, while the EMS in particular were receiving donation from downtown, they had not received um, donation from the community. Um, and in fact, they were tired of getting pizzas from downtown. <laughs> where we were able to provide them with like stick to the bone meals and chicken and mac and cheese and collard greens. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds um, good. <laughs> it, it was very good. Um, and the other, on the, and then the other side was supporting a local restaurant while they had um, takeout orders, but um, their staff was, uh, cut and we were able to support that industry mm -hmm. and the restaurant workers so that 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 was another piece so everything was really working together and the community really um connected with this endeavor in a way that i i had not expected um to the point where other ideas began to flourish. People were connecting in a way that we had not done before. We've always had a great block association, but we've had a, we have a lot of new families. And through this endeavor, people began to know each other. Um, and we had a Zoom call, a Zoom block meeting <laughs> where we were able to connect by face, um, something we had not done before. But again, we're doing a lot of things that we've never done before during this time. But yes, um, the community impact was um, 
just really beautiful and um, enrich, enriching for all around. Excellent, excellent. I, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to this. Um, <laughs> I usually have a lot of questions, but um, I'm tying a lot of what you're talking about to why we even started Iron Perspective. When it stopped or when it paused, because nothing stopped for us and we had to regroup, the, one of the first, <clears throat> one of the first uh, events that we had, we had a room full of people and we were really kind of just checking in with people. Like, how are you doing? You know, it was our first virtual Iron Perspective. And that was one of the most powerful ones that we had. We were, we were like, how are we going to do this virtually? Well, we, we need people together, da, da, da. But it was, uh, it was this recognition of community, right? Um, that we had established within Iron Perspective. It, it blows our mind. They're like, oh man, we have a community. One, but just a community period, right? And I'm a New Yorker, born and raised, and I see, you know, we're New Yorkers. And a lot of people don't look at New York as a city of neighborhoods. It's like just a city of buildings and chaos. <laughs> but if you can ever catch New York on a Sunday morning or a regular day, like that, there's a lot of communities here. And to see now how people's attention are starting to, to shift to like, how do we come together as a community? You said a block association. I'm so grateful. I grew up in Queens. I had a block association on my block. Um, and it came together because of the crack epidemic. Mm. There was a crack house that popped up at the end of this block. I lived on a block full of houses and resident homeowners. And so when crack hit everywhere as it did, and then it gets into a neighborhood where the homeowner, then, then they came together. And from that came all these other things, man. Then the kids on the block, we, we had trips, we were going to museums and everything. And this was just from the people on the block. It was, it was incredible now I think about it in retrospect, how many people I've met who they don't even know the people in their, their building, you know, on their floor and so forth. So with that, what you just said, I want to lead into the next question as far, and you kind of just touched on it there, um, Marie, as far as like, I, Nussi and I talk often about what are some of the rewarding things that we experience, you know, when you do something that's kind of against the grain, you know, we're telling people, Nussi's got degrees, you know, I'm like an international spoken word artist, I've got books and things, and we're telling people like, oh yeah, we're going to do conversations in New York, and people are like, what the hell are you talking about? But we've had such rich, rewarding moments that were like, sometimes really big, sometimes room shifting, and it's sometimes so minute that we kind of had to look at each other like, did that just happen? You know? um, so my question to you is, what has been the most rewarding experience through this? I, I know you've had a lifetime of giving, but like during this most recent uh, spat of you giving, what's been the most rewarding thing for you? And that's the question is for both of you. So whoever wants to go for it. <laughs> Well, my stagehands, having stagehands say, wow, nobody ever thinks of us. Thanks for thinking of us. I mean, while Marie was talking, I was shaking my head yes, because they don't feel like anybody ever is aware of the fact that they have challenges out there. They live in a sort of odd world that people don't understand. Um, when you put a bag of food in somebody's trunk and you see them with tears in their eyes or somebody tells you it was the only good thing that has happened to them in two weeks mm. um, I just uh, I, that the, it's everything that it doesn't get any better than that I, I know in the heart of hearts that I did something that truly helped somebody else and um, I'm not getting anything from that other than, you know, that I'm glad I'm doing good things or that I may be staying busy. You know, I feel accomplished in that sense, but, but when you do something and you're not really expecting return, like I'm not looking for anything, there's nothing, you can't not satisfy me in that sense. You could, you could flip me off as you're driving off. I might wonder, but I'm actually going to just go, okay, that guy's having a bad day. I hope he enjoys his uh, cucumber. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so 
the things that have made tears come to my eyes is um, is the true. Oh, I know one. I got a great one. So there was a fancy mushroom um, grower here in town who had extra mushrooms for a couple of weeks. So he just donated some right last minute night before we get 40 pounds of like lion's mane, gray oyster, fancy restaurant mushrooms. <laughs> and one of the guys who picked up the bag that first week came back the second week and he brought back photographs that are like, art quality photographs that he had take he had got he had decided to research the mushrooms research recipes to make with the mushrooms cooked fancy foods he hadn't tried before took photographs of it and he came back the next week and he told us that the food was great and it was really cool but what really saved him and what really gave him the most thing was this new idea of these mushrooms he was unfamiliar with that gave him something to dig into and become attached to and learn about. Mm. And that certainly hadn't, you know, there was no pre-planning for that, but to have somebody share that you had that kind of an impact on them when what you think you're doing is feeding them, that's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, you know, impact, um, you know, we speak about that a lot um, and what that looks like. Uh, and sometimes we think we're doing one thing to support in a certain way. And sometimes we don't we didn't even realize we did anything at all. And it supported someone in a way that we may not even recognize for ourselves. But when we do, it, it is a very rewarding experience knowing that we have been able to do that. Uh, Marie, um, what was the most rewarding thing? Yeah, and, and I'm sitting there thinking about the different experiences, and I, um, so when the meals were being delivered, um, it was important for me to make sure that the transaction um, happened smoothly. There was a concern that was raised about contamination because um, originally we had talked about getting pans of food and mm. and so, so I know that's not going to work. So I work with the um, with the vendor to make sure that the meals were individually packed um, and knowing also that they were doing takeout food. So and, and knowing um, that particular vendor that I knew that they were going to take good care not to um, to do it in um, a way that would minimize any contamination. Um, so it was important for me to be there also as we, um, and it was like 10 minutes we're there, make the, the, the delivery. Um, and remembering, um, and, and, and it was a little bit of work because uh, I, I had to, one of my, my, my outings during the last couple of weeks had to, was to go to the different sites so that I can speak directly with the, um, with the commander or the, or the, the, the staff at home hospital, because it was difficult to reach people by phone. And so I said, okay, I need to, so I, cause I needed to make sure that, um, People were going to be there to receive the food. It, you know, it, it turned out to be a whole lot of logistical stuff that I had not really thought about, but it, it was okay. But when I met with the commander at the um, uh, EMS unit, um, he was just so um, humbled and appreciative that we had thought about them and especially in the community while they were receiving things from downtown, um, a lot of healthy foods and a lot of pizzas. Um, and the fact that they knew the vendor, Jacob's Restaurant, um, brought such a smile to his face um, that it, it, it left a really feel good feeling for me that mm -hmm. um, this was something that they wanted, they needed, they were looking forward to it. And um, my daughter writing thank you notes was a, a, 
it was really a beautiful thing to see her sit down and do a lot of the thank you encouragement notes um, to the first responders uh, and bringing her to that process. And uh, she fortunately came home from college just in time before the lockdown. So I've been having a really um, enjoyable time getting to know her as a young adult and this process of us working together because she would mm -hmm. come and she would take photographs so that I could share with the neighbors because I didn't want to put anybody else at risk. I, I, I knew that I was okay, but I, I, I wasn't asking a bunch of people to come with me. But uh, so she documented the experience. So, um, so one of the outcome for me personally was doing this work with, with my daughter for her to see what it looks like when you make a commitment and you, um, and you put into action and what happens when others are enrolled in that vision. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I, and I'm still surprised yeah. of all the other things that has come out of this. Experience. I hear from both of you that you guys are doing this with your children. And, yeah, I was um, just going to say, wow, because that's exactly yeah. my story. Tim, I did, it, and for the same reasons, Marie, because I didn't want to involve other people. We knew we were safe and that we could keep our each other, you know, same exact reasons. And then he's, the, he's 30, so he's got like Instagram and some of the social media and some of those <laughs> pieces like better than his mom does. And he's been, it's actually been tremendously rewarding to work with him as my project manager. He's had really good ideas. You know, now I don't make decisions without talking with him about it first. Whereas it was my project to begin with. Yeah, I just did. Now it's us. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, Marie, I'm, I'm with you completely on that. Yeah. yeah. No, that's beautiful. I think even during this time, um, you know, my relationship with my parents, I don't think I've ever been closer now. I'm like, you know, before I might have avoided some phone calls, to be honest. Now I, you know, look forward to them. Um, and so there's definitely a level of appreciation and gratitude. And, you know, Marie, you mentioned um, that your daughter was writing notes. And recently, um, they just started, New York City Food Bank just started an initiative around writing notes um, to people as they deliver the food, they would also include a note, right? Basically providing, it's called, I don't have the exact thing, providing hope. There's something around providing hope. I'll, I'll find it. But um, a lot of people are alone, right? And so one of the beautiful things about doing this work is that um, you are able to do it not alone. You're able to do it with someone, you know, um, and there's a beauty in that. And I think um, those letters, while it might seem like people might not think about it, but I do think there's a much bigger impact than people realize because it's people are alone. There's a lot of alone people out there. And so how do you reach out to them? Not everyone has a community like we all do, right? We have access to people and, you know, we are not alone even when we are home alone. So, um, yeah, true. Yeah. No, and I just love the, um, I, we talk about generations often. I love thinking about, uh, like, this is mm -hmm. chaos for a lot of people, you know, and uh, especially for the kids. You know, I can mm -hmm. say especially for anybody, but we can say especially for the elders, they're, they're more susceptible, but the kids, they don't really have a concept of what this is, you know, and they're looking to us as they usually are, but they're especially looking at us now to see how we react as people, not how the government reacts, not how the governor reacts, but how does the person in their household react? Okay, this thing is happening. And to see like, okay, my mom's out there setting the block motion in part, you know, you know the mm -hmm. block association emotion. Well, my mom's out here, she's helping the union. Like that resonates to the children and then to their peers and everything like that. So I, I'm thinking of that, like, how do you feel? And this is just a personal opinion, you know, you can kind of go anywhere with this. How do you feel like things are gonna change from this? You know, as far as how people um, 
maybe get involved with the local stuff or community do you see community coming together i, I know nussie mentioned a lot a lot of people talking more we're getting a lot more zooms we uh, or, or what what does this look like without this happening is there ever the is there ever a, a block zoom on 132nd in central harlem you know if this doesn't happen do you, do you how do you see things moving forward um, it's, it's interesting that you should ask that question because I've been reflecting on that as well. And um, with some of my neighbors, um, we, we did do a, a, a blood Zoom where uh, many, many of the neighbors participated. Um, but concretely, I, I think deepening our relationship in particular with um, the police, um, mm -hmm. the police precinct, mm -hmm. uh, the police in, in our neighborhood in Central Harlem, um, really um, have not had the best of reputations, and 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 working with them in this way, giving our gratitude for the work that they're doing currently to protect us and and being out there um, during this pandemic to make sure that things are um, how they're supposed to be. And I think the community is also seeing them in a different light. Right. Um, and they are seeing us in a different light. Ah, these are people who are thinking about us. Like, I, like I said, the police person in particular, um, they really had difficulty really accepting that we wanted to do something. In fact, I, I, I had to call several times and say, yes, we, we want to do this for you. It's okay. We want to say thank you. And they were like, no, you know, just the fact that you're thinking about us is, is good. And I said, no, we, we want to provide you with, with some meals. Um, and so there's going to be a shift in that relationship, as I see in the future. That's, that's a concrete and real-time shift, uh, at least for this, this block and, and, the, and the surrounding block. Um, uh, and and also that neighbors, um, while we've had we have a tight knit community, but I think it's going to be even tighter. That we are really going to um, work in the sense of what community is. Already, there's communication about um, people um, offering to do to help mm -hmm. to do X, Y, and Z. Um, there's there's that communication happening now that I believe will continue in the future. Um, and so the sense of unity um, has been deepened. Uh, so we have a stronger foundation. That's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Kim? <laughs> Yeah, Florida's experience is not that experience. Um, so I actually think it's going to depend a lot on what happens over the next month or six weeks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here, they're mad because they can't be on the beach. Right. And they're mad because people are telling them they can't go to a concert. And so their attitude here is not that of um your experience because they get that when we have a hurricane here because it affected them directly and somebody mm. next door had their house knocked over you're feeling it because you can hear the ambulances all the time i mean it makes me cry as i think of that we've been fortunate in that that isn't our experience here so i'm actually a little concerned because I feel like I've watched, I'm watching a lot of people who aren't being thoughtful of others. And mm. so I see the divide, I see more divide in some ways because of this than maybe we're even mm. going on prior to this. Um, and that concerns me because it was already ugly. Um, so if I get my druthers, everybody's gonna have a little bit garden I think partly what people have learned and what I hope we learn as we move forward is that it really is important that we have the ability to survive um, bad things when they happen. 
And I think that if people are being aware and honest, they will see that people aren't getting paid enough, mm -hmm. that having our insurance attached to our jobs and having health be a profit center that is disease controlling um, are not ways that we can live. Mm -hmm. I believe that one of the reasons America has gotten hit like they have is because we're in general not healthy people. And um, so eating healthier, being aware of how we can um, do things to keep our environments and ourselves and our families healthy and strong all the time, not just when you're concerned you might get a virus. I mean, those would all be things that I hope we can take and do as, as people, as individuals. I'm afraid that I, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of unnerved by what I'm watching right now in, in Florida. No, um, I love okay. it because that's, I, I love your answer, I should say. Not, oh, I love it, but <laughs> um, we, we know a lot of people in New York and we talk to a lot of people in New York. So in our last essential workers and uh, the last conversations that we've had, we've included people from outside of New York because this is hitting everywhere. It's mm -hmm. weird to us being here how people are looking at it like 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 New York started this, you know, like we got some walled up barrier around no, us. No, <laughs> you guys had an airport and they let a whole bunch of freaking sick people in. Yeah. And so you know what? <laughs> you guys have handled something that you shouldn't have had to handle. And that's yeah. another one of my opinions. <laughs> I, 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 though, as, you know, the even I see the privilege there's always privilege issues here. Oh yeah. But like the privilege of I'm a few states away and this mm -hmm. might not get down here, which is kind of crazy to me. We're, we're a country, we're a borderless country. Like yeah. you can get yeah. from New York to down to Orlando. <laughs> without well, that's why Jarell, I say, uh, wait till six weeks now. Yeah. I mean, honest to God, they've let go here. They don't care one iota. <laughs> it's, it's no masks. Everybody do what they want crowds on the beat. I mean, seriously, kids, I'm going to stay inside more now than I did for the last month. But you know, Kim, I think um, if people had the choice here, they would be doing this. A lot of people would be doing the same. We have people, there are people out there in the parks and people being irresponsible, especially, I think it actually worked in our favor because it was kind of cooler until now. So people decided to stay in, but now that it's getting warmer, and it gets humid out here, and we're in very tighter spaces. Right. Um, but what I think, um, you know, even what Marie mentioned, like, I think the only other time I've ever experienced anything similar to this is right after 9-11, right? When um, the community really took the time to come together, like, okay, no, like, in this tragedy, and like you said, Kim, when there's a hurricane, Florida gets together, and they come together, and they have to do what they have to do, right? Absolutely. Um, during this time, um, so something that, you know, Jarell and I, you know, we have our purpose and that has been empathy, right? Because we think, we know that after all of this, that empathy is still going to be very much needed, even more so, um, maybe than before, right? Um, in so many different ways, so many different levels. Um, and so as we were revamping and deciding what that looks like for us, um, we wanted to continue keeping the community in connection, um, which we have been doing through some of our more formal conversations and through some of our even, you know, um, we've been doing some Netflix parties too, just on a lighter note, because you're like, maybe people don't want to talk about this all the time. Maybe there's mm -hmm. an opportunity to disconnect. Um, on top of that, something, you know, Jarrell and I have been working on is, um, and we finally just gave it a name, and that's um, I Am Protected. Mm. Um, Love that. And what we're looking to do, right, we're from Queens, New York, and um, initially this was a very, this was a hot zone out here, especially where we live. It was a hot zone. Um, Jarrell's mom works in the hospital. I have a lot of family members that are in the medical field, and then also, you know, people, just all sorts of people um, that have been affected. And, you know, wanting to do our part we've been wanting to do more things so right before this all went down we were going to have a conference 
um, that had the two conferences that got canceled and we had ordered some hand sanitizer, travel size hand sanitizer. Now this is not something you can go and give out to the hospitals because it'll be done in like two minutes, right? But um, I think for us, I am protected. We want to help. Um, we've also been getting masks made. I'm not, neither one of us sew, but Get we're facilitating the, <laughs> that. Right, that's um, cool. We're facilitating the um, materials, um, and we have someone, um, you know, that has been helping us. Um, and we have been basically reaching out to people, and this is a mixture of, I think, what both of you are doing. Um, we have been giving them out to essential workers, but for us, essential means a whole variety of things. And it's not just doctors and people in the medical field. It's also our MTA professionals. Um, when we had our interview with some of our essential workers, the other essential workers, as we called it, um, they still haven't had it. They didn't get protection yet. They didn't have masks yet. Um, now they finally got some masks that they have to, you know, prolong throughout the week. Um, and so the post office, um, there's the so many different, the supermarket, yes, right. Um, and so we've been creating these essential packets to get, like, because we think every, like, that's really our goal is that everybody matters. Um, which is a core principle of I am perspective, period. Um, and so... Um, how can we get involved in that? I, I, I like to know, how can I get involved in that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think what you guys are doing is exactly what we're looking for. Um, we are looking for other people. Like, I see this as a bigger vision of people in the community wanting to do things and having a central place for resources, right? So... Um, we're all part of communities. We're in community with Kim and, you know, you, Marie, different kinds of communities, but communities nonetheless, right? Um, and what would that look like? Um, we can't sew, but we have the fabric and there's people with sewing machines at home that are not being used. How can we get that sewing machine to someone that does know how to sew and then ha is willing to sew? Like, um, and, and or if you, can, made us yeah. Even think about having you on or, or what you guys are doing because it's, mm -hmm. The unsung part of it is like, you know, and one of the first questions is like, were yeah. you doing this work before? You know, it's like, it's you know, kind of tied into what you're doing. But from what I heard in both of your stories of like, now nah, this is totally new. This is like, right. I think that we, we kind of feel that as well of like, we don't know how to sew, but we have some resources and we can get some fabric and we can do this. And as we started doing that, as Marie had mentioned too, like, wow, now we're about to go to a, a documentary mm -hmm. for the EMT work uh, in the Bronx. Not think, we didn't do that because that we were gonna go just hand them out the stuff that we did for free. But then now it's like, no, we want you to come and be a part of this. And we, we wanna echo that out to the community of like, mm -hmm. you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have a block association. You don't have to have a block. <laughs> you can exactly. you know, all just start yeah. where we are around us. Um, I am I, I love it. I am protected. And 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 I love that you call it essential workers because mm -hmm. think of the first responders because mm -hmm. they're in first line um who are doing this work, but mm -hmm. um the supermarket, you know, they we're able to get supplies because these people they show up, um, they come to work and they they are in service to us. And I don't think enough of us think about of them and even the 99 cent stores that are open um places like that yeah. that um without them we wouldn't be able to really um be in um shelter in comfortably the way we are now i did want to say one of the things that one of the outcomes that i'm seeing and i hope that will continue that people are, are kinder to each other or will continue to be kind to each other as well as kind to themselves. There's a lot of deep self-reflection. There's a lot of um, deep self-care that's happening right now. And my hope and is that that will continue um, that pause where we're able to take all of that in. Um, will, you know, the energy of that will continue once we're back out into the world in it's, it's it's going to be a new normal, yes, but we will be getting back into the world and that um, we continue that, that energy of 
taking care of ourselves and taking care of each other and taking care of the planet. And most importantly, <laughs> <laughs> there is not a planet B. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe Ralph, this is the masks I'm sewing. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yes, I've seen them. Put, those are amazing. Nice. So they, they start out like this. Like little, just, oh, they're muslin with that. So this turns into one of these. Yay! Yes. Uh, and see, Mark, the block has started the seven o'clock cheer. Oh, wonderful. okay. Oh, I'm also, in an eight o'clock howl. <laughs> can, can you actually put us by the window, Marie? Can we hear that? Yeah. Would that be possible? Let's get that on, on I, camera. I, 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 this actually happening. Right. As we're getting to the ending of this show, this is perfect. Oh, what a great way. Mm -hmm. we, we, we really capture, we try to capture as much of this, and we keep playing like, yo, we're in. Hey. <laughs> we're in Queens, so we don't hear it so much. Can you hear it? Awesome. No, maybe not. Oh, man. It's probably because she, she put it out the window. She's by the window now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> But that's that's, um, that's amazing, you know. I I that. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, I can hear. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. Um, to be able to experience that, it's been happening. I think it was supposed to be one night, and now it's been happening every evening. Um, you know, and it's. Really, like, I think we're all in this together, um, and we all have a part to play, whether we're on the front lines, whether we're playing support from the back. Um, I don't know football, but it sounds like a football analogy, so, Jarrell, you can finish off with that. Is <laughs> a quarterback somewhere? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to let you fumble around with that one. <laughs> Ooh, the bump, bump. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay <laughs> um it was a pleasure having both of you ladies with us um we appreciate everything that you two are doing um and if any way that we could be of support let us know um and with that you know asking you know what does support look like for you guys going forward so that you can continue the mission that you're on right so um yeah, what does that look like for you? First, I have to say, um, really great getting to hear your story, Kim. And as you're talking, you've given me some ideas. I've been worried about um, the, the farmer's market, um, which I've been a regular for many, many years. This is where I get my flowers, especially around this time. I'm like, what is happening with them and what's happening to the produce? I'm, I'm sure that someone is handling something and again, this is what I think, I don't know, but I am going to make it a point to find out what's happening to the farmer's market, um, how they're doing and how they're getting um, support. Um, but um, so the question is in terms of support, how, how, how do you need to, how, what kind of support we need? <laughs> um, Right now, I think it's um, just continuing to um, to reach out, making sure that people are are um, are heard, um, that people are seen in whatever experience that they're having right now. And it could be through um, just the Zoom call, the Black Association, or just checking in um, with with folks in the community to say, um, I'm thinking about you. Um, what can I do? Um, and, and for me, it's just continuing to be open to what's possible and to know that my small contribution has a ripple effect and and that um and not to diminish what it is that i have to offer i often 
you know, I, I often do that. I say, oh, so it's a little thing, and <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> So um, just being in a, in, in a, just staying positive. You know, that's what uh, Nasi was saying to Kim earlier, you know, with all, of course, love and respect that, like, nothing that you guys are doing is small. You know, if you fed a hundred and something people, like, that's more than I fed in my life. <laughs> you know, and like that, we, we wanted to really highlight, you know, that what you're doing matters. From our personal standpoint, um, yeah, we needed another radio show, or whatever. But we could have just did this just for you guys. You know that that every aspect of what you're doing really, really helps. So, thank you, thank you, mm -hmm. Tim. How, what does support look like for you? Um, well, this radio show probably will be helpful because I'm sure there'll be a link that I can share. But anyway, um, you know, I'm fundraising. So I have a GoFundMe. It's Food to Trunk, T-O-T-R-U-N-K. And I have a Facebook fundraiser, Food to Trunk. So uh, if somebody has the, feels the move to throw $10 my way or $100 or $1,000, I will take it. Um, the more I get, I can grab another farmer and do another day during the week. I mean, you know, it just, it, it grows what I'm able to do. Um, and just sharing what I'm doing because I think I've also seen the idea spread. So other people have taken the idea of raising money and buying the farmer's food and distributing food to people who need it. So it's a little bit of a different model and I've actually seen it picked up by others. So mm -hmm. if, if, if nothing else, if people think of it as a way to approach the model of food distribution, uh, that is pretty cool too. So those are, you know, ways to help me mm. thank, thank you, you. <laughs> yes uh, I, thank you to the both of you yeah. well you too marie <laughs> <laughs> i think it's you always amazing in the midst of it you know i feel like i'm watching it from afar a little bit i mean it hurts from like i said economically here that's not the same i feel like uh you know because we could talk about that and go to a whole nother hour but i've uh, seen it from new york this feels like when we were watching Italy. And, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and I feel like the rest of the people in the country, be it Florida, or Midwest or whatever, they're looking at it how we were looking at Italy. I agree. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's really bad over in New York. <laughs> that's why I think the next six weeks could make a big difference, Joel, because I'm not so sure everybody else is so vaccinated from what this is yet. And that when everybody opens the door and just goes rushing out, I don't know. I think there might be some surprises out there. Right, right. Not good ones. And I'm sorry to say that. But yeah. at, at first we were like, hey, man, we want to get back to normal as soon as possible, but more is as this goes, we're like, hey, maybe that is absolutely not what we need to do at all. Mm -hmm. And seeing as this might be our new normal for the next year, 18, 24, 36 months, whatever, um, we know that the work that you're doing, the work that we're trying to do, and I love mm -hmm. what you as far as how, and we've been dancing around that idea of like, man, you put this idea out there and then someone else sees it and then someone else sees it. Um, Nussie and I, Nussie can't, she doesn't show it on her face, but she's super idealistic like me. And we believe, <laughs> we believe that, that things can change. We believe that a little bit of empathy can go a long way. And we know that what you're doing is, is adding to that. So I will say again, thank you so much. Uh, this was okay. a wonderful, loving. Uh, we appreciate you really just jumping in last minute. I'm going for you right now, but it would ruin the mm -hmm. audio. Uh, <laughs> and hey, I appreciate what you guys are doing. You know, you're opening up conversations with people and and doing things that are hard. It's hard to have an open conversations that are challenging um, topics. And it's important, but it's hard. And you guys have been doing it now really successfully for a while. And I appreciate yeah. that you wanted to share my story with your with your group of people. We did say we're going to have you on here one day. We just didn't know for what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. 
When the pandemic know. comes, yeah, we're gonna have you on our show. <laughs> you know, one day we'll talk about herbs and teas, but right, right. we're talking about <laughs> food to <laughs> drunk. We didn't even mention that this whole. Time. <laughs> yeah. And I, mean, I really would like to see how I can spread this idea of I am protected that you both have launched because um, I, I have a committed group of people and audience now that I can say, hey, this is what this community is doing. You know, what can we do? So I'd like to, if you can email me more information on how I can support. Definitely. To move it, yes. to move it forward. Thank you. you we know. appreciate you guys um, for wanting to support us. You know, I we have uh, a few different things that we're currently, it's in the beginning phases that we're working on. Um, I know, Kim, you're working on a mask. We actually have a prototype of one of our arm masks. I don't know, Terrell, if you have one right now real quick. Um, but it, it is a very, um, we were fortunate enough to enroll one of our friends who's actually a wedding dress designer. And she was able to, we have the you know, right, really, oh, that's a pattern. Oh, so it turns out to be like an N95. <laughs> yes, and it has a filter and everything in there as well. And so we do have this pattern. Um, our problem has been how, who can we get to sew for us? So Marie, if that's a way, if, you know, if you have people in the neighborhood who, there, I know there's people out there that know how to sew that, you know, <laughs> there has to be right there, somebody out there. Has, um, reach out to those union seamstresses. You guys got Broadway up there. They're all over up there. Mm, good to know. And the IA seamstresses have been all in on this. So go reach out to somebody in local one and get them to connect you up with the um yeah. the seamstresses. Gosh, I, yeah, I, I have a I have a lead. Um, yes, uh, this is a costume designer for Broadway shows, and her unit is not working. So, yeah. so please send me some information. Yeah, um, I might be able to connect you to someone. Definitely, we'll talk. Um, the other initiative that we've just really started talking about, and I'm not 100% sure. Well, I have an idea, but um, a lot of us are not using our Metro cards right now. And mm. so those are that's essentially going to waste. I know I have a few. I don't even know how much is on my Metro card at this point. I'm not getting on the subway or bus anytime soon, and I'm clear that many of us are not. So um, there are essential workers who are still working, making the same salary that they were making before they started, probably. And so how can we alleviate, like, what would it look like? Not, you know, not essential workers, even the underprivileged, right? Like, how do we get these metric cards to them from the hands of the people where it's just sitting in our pockets and our wallets um, and into the hands of the people who actually need it? So um, many, many ideas. We do not have all the answers. Um, and that's why we are looking to create, create a community. We do have our um, Instagram, which is at i.mperspective. I think we only have maybe 10 people on there. We just started it. So um, well, we definitely we will add you guys to our groups. <laughs> um, Please do. Yeah. Yes. But let's see, I know right now that the bus and subways are free. I don't, I think the, the okay, subways okay. are supposed to be free. But um, but you, you hit on a, a, a mind that needs to be really thought about. Because people are not going to be using those metro cards, even when things so-called get back to normal. Yeah. How, how do we access? How do we access those funds? Those funds. And um, and just make uh, you know reuse them. Find another way to to yeah. distribute them. Yeah. And that, that that's what I love to this. I know because we're we're uh, ending on our recording time because we <laughs> keep going, but uh. Mm -hmm. Uh, as as was said earlier, Marie said, like, we love doing this because we could talk to essential workers and then end up solving another issue that somebody on the call had. You know, I was trying to get such and such, and you know, hey, I have that connect. So that's what, I, that's one of the greatest things that we do in Iron Perspective. We love doing this. We love making those connections. So again, thank you so much. Thank you all yes. for being here. Um, I'm going to bring this home. I wish I had a nice, cool little speech that we say all the time, but we don't. <laughs> we just know that uh, this is a beautiful time. It is, it's, it's challenging. It's going to be challenging for a lot of people. You you two are inspiring to us, and, and we're grateful that we can be inspiring back. And um, 
Thank you, Kim, for your information. We're going to put all that on our on our pages as well. Um, and we're going to just keep throwing our good energy out there. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's great to meet you, Marie. Yeah. Yes. And we'll put you two in contact as yeah, well. I'd love to get her information. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, we we so do need headshots from you guys. I'll send over that follow up message to you both. And okay. Thank you. Let's continue and stay in connection and see what else we can create. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Yeah. This was Thank fun. You WEMS Thank you. Radio, as always, for having us. It's episode 15 of Iron Perspective Radio, and we are out of here. Yes. Yeah.